You might not believe it, but this is not Webflow, this is not custom code, or this is not hiring a special developer, or Flexboxes, the invention of Flexboxes. This is Squarespace. Now, many developers don't like Squarespace because when it came out, it was ahead of its time. It was probably the first no-code tool before no code was even a thing. You might be asking, what is no code? Well, I'm gonna show you two definitions. One definition I found on the internet was, no code are tools, are software development platforms that allow even non-technical employees to build and deploy their own applications without writing a single line of code. Now, that definition focuses on the application side, but that also works for websites. Let's take a look at what Webflow says about this. What is no code development? Right here on this third paragraph, it says, for the majority of us who lack the know-how in writing code, the idea of crafting a web app or building a website seems forever out of reach. But what was once a space that only developers and those with well-skilled encoding could navigate is now open to everyone. I think that is the base definition of no code. What used to only be for people who wrote code can now be done by anyone. The no code movement has removed the obstacle of having to know programming languages, letting anyone bring their ideas to light. And I don't think there's a tool out there for website design that has done it better than Squarespace. And in the last two years, they have revolutionized this process. A lot of people wrote them off but they stay true to their original reason they started the company. As far as I've heard and read and seen from Anthony, when he started Squarespace, what he did that was so monumental at the time was that he took this ability to create a blog structure, the original CMS, and connect it to a website. Now you may be saying, well, duh, that's always how it's been. In actuality, that's not the case. Before, and I'm not gonna get into the specifics, but those were completely separate. To have a website was one thing and to have a blog was another thing. He combined those and that's what we now know as Squarespace. But since then, they have upgraded, changed and dramatically changed the landscape of website development. And over the last two years, things they have done that most people have overlooked and has been quiet, but has been such a game changer. Number one, they released 7.1, which was a whole new framework for sites and templates. Now you don't have templates. Everything is built off of one core builder that gives you the options and flexibility of all their templates that you, they used to have before. So now you could do everything in one hub and you don't have to change your mind later and change templates. Number two, in the course of the last few years, the first thing they purchased was Acuity, which is a scheduling tool similar to Calendly, where you could schedule meetings, appointments, charge for them, charge for memberships and schedule classes and all of that. They purchased Acuity, which was the biggest publicized one. But over the last few years, they've purchased a restaurant reservation tool. They purchased an app for designing and creating social assets. They've also set up and created a full email campaign tool. So you could set up automation emails right out of your Squarespace site. They've added memberships and they've also added subscriptions and they've done all of this in one tool. What I love about this the most is MailChimp now has a website builder or ConvertKit has a website builder. There are other tools out there that have website builders, but those were add-ons. And if you really consider it, Squarespace was the first to do this whole block and movement. So you don't have to write code. You just drag a block down or drag a block up and that's how you organize the content. Well, let's think of what, about one of the best apps in the world right now, Notion. Notion's entire block system is set up. They talk about it from a Lego perspective, set up like Legos, but in the same way, that's literally the format, the UI is exactly what Squarespace was doing two, three, four, five years prior. Let's consider a few more. I think the tool is called Elementor. That's a tool that you could use WordPress and create a drag and drop feature. Awesome, that's great. Where'd they get the drag and drop feature from? Squarespace. The look and feel is very similar. The biggest challenge I have with Webflow, and, and let me just really say this, I love Webflow. I've built sites on Webflow, I absolutely love it. I think it's a great tool, and if you're a designer, it's gonna give you full flexibility and freedom. But 
there's a big caveat to that. You have to have at least a base knowledge of website design before you get into Webflow. If you don't understand what a class is or what a div is or what a section is or what a main is, your site is gonna be jumbled up and messy. It's gonna get complicated and you're gonna be very frustrated because the way they show their properties and sections all lay out in a way that you have to have at least a base understanding of web development. And so it's a no code tool but with the presumption that you already understand web development and understand code, which is a bit of a weird place. It's great for designers, it's great for web developers, but it's not great for the DIYer who's gonna build just one site for their business. And you know what I absolutely love? Here I am on a sample website in Webflow. If I click on to add an element, they've added this layouts feature, which this is literally what Squarespace was doing prior to them publishing this. And this style and structure is, again, what you need, but it simplifies the process a thousand times over because if you don't understand classes, even if you do, like a professional developer has to remember the classes they set for every single client, and that's a lot of work. And then to expect the client to be able to update or manage a site in the future, that is literally impossible with Webflow compared to a Squarespace. Now, some of you may be fuming right now, and that's okay. If you haven't looked at Squarespace recently, let me just show you a few things that they've done and made really simple. And the UI UX, the entire scalability of it is amazing. And the biggest thing that made me record this video today is what they call Fluid Engine. So let me show you a little bit into that now. Okay, so this is Fluid Engine. It gives you full control of designing the desktop and mobile however you like. You could layer blocks on top of each other before you couldn't do that, but now you can, and you can customize it so the desktop is one way and the mobile is a whole nother look and feel. So you get this grid feature in the background where you could easily just grab items, move them around how you like, set it up exactly as you like. This feature has made the whole process of designing sites a lot easier. And again, as you could see here, you could have the desktop and mobile set up however you like. Now, a few other things that are just so monumental on a site with Squarespace is every single one of them comes with these core features. If I go to design and I go to site styles, built in native with just a few clicks, you could customize the fonts and colors. Literally, if I have the main font and the main color, I can get this done in less than five minutes and make sure it's consistent across the whole site. There's no other tool that has the scalability of this alongside all the other features as well. So for fonts, I come in here and I can pick the font I want and it'll set it for all headings and all paragraphs. If I wanna change it, I can. You just come in here too and they give you predefined font pairing as well. This is amazing, especially compared to what it was before. It was really chaotic before, but this is really, really easy and beautiful. So you can come in here, pick the fonts you like. Let's just say we really like this. We click into it. We add it, boom, just like that, it's been added. We can go back and we can do a few customizations to it how we like. We have a base font size as well. All of it's gonna scale properly to all sizes and formats. And again, all the headings and paragraphs are set once, set easily and set quickly. So you could get it up and running fast, beautiful, and make it consistent across your whole site. When it comes to colors, they have these 10 different layout options that you get out of the box that you can customize. When I set up colors, I just go into edit palette and I can easily just go into the center one here, pick the main color I want. Let's say I want this green here. Boom, and then I go from color, go like this, and now I've literally just designed the whole website with ease. Now, all the sections have exactly what I want. The font, the formatting is exactly as I want it. The colors are beautiful. The style is amazing. The spacing is on point. Literally, all of it's been done in seconds. This is probably one of the best no-code tools for website development that just gets overlooked. And on top of all this, you get full accessibility for SEO purposes. So anything you wanna do with SEO, you can do on the site. There's nothing that hinders you in this process. At the end of the day, is it still a template? Yes, but the SEO side of it is fully delved out where before it wasn't. So over the last two, three years, they've done so much to revolutionize the platform 
and designers have just missed out on it because they were overly focused on uniqueness and creativity and lost the side of it where it comes to solving business problems. Design solves business problems, but any extra design beyond that is not necessary. So keeping things essential and simple are a general principle that I live by. I've had sites on Squarespace that clients have raised $10 million on. I have sites on Squarespace where clients have grown their business 10x and I have sites on Squarespace that get over a million hits a month of organic traffic. If you want that too, check out the links below because there are resources. If you're building your first site, if you want to become a designer on Squarespace, the average project I land right now is anywhere between 10 to 20k on Squarespace. It could even be more, especially if I'm just doing website development. This has been one of the best processes and the key golden ticket here is I have a core belief that website development should be kept to web developers. So business owners shouldn't become web developers. They should be able to go in and update their site. Even if you build the perfect site and they are 100% ecstatic about it today, they're gonna need to make a change tomorrow. It's just the fact of business. So Squarespace is the easiest place where you could just double click in, change the text, replace the image, hit save, and you are done. If you got value from today's video, hit that like button. If you have any questions, drop them down below. And if you want more content like this, consider subscribing. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.